So the first, I wanted to ask you about two things that are related to begin with. One has to do with time and, and its relationship to entropy. And I just want to see if I understand that relationship. I have some specific reasons for that because there are attempts in the neuroscience literature to tie emotional processing, both on the positive and negative side, to the concept of entropy. And I did some work on that topic, especially with negative emotion in my lab. And I want to make sure that I actually understand the underlying concept. So, and it should be of some interest to the people who are watching and listening. So the first, the first question I have is, is whether or not it's reasonable to, is there a distinction between time and change? I mean, my sense is that, and this ties us into the entropy discussion, I guess, to some degree. I mean, my sense is, is that our perception of time which is difficult to distinguishable from time itself as a phenomenon. Our perception of time is something like our abstraction of average rates of change. And it also seems to me that in a system where there's no change, like a closed system where there's no change, there's also no time. And that time is something like the walk through the multiple states that a complex system can be in and that that's essentially associated with something with with entropy and now is there anything wrong I mean, it's very this? close N not really at all okay I, I say that the real the real challenge to give a precise answer to your question which is a good one the challenge is nobody has a real definition of what the word time actually means, what it is. The best that we can do in physics is posit that there is some axis, there is some quality that we can measure change by invoking, much as you just described. We say that time has elapsed because the system has changed. But is that a real definition of time? Not, not really. It's a very pragmatic approach. In our equations, we have a little variable called T. It's introduced in basically all the dynamical equations of physics. And yet we are still struggling to figure out, is it something we impose from the outside because it's a useful way of organizing experience to have a temporal order to things? Is it fundamentally written into the laws of reality that there is this thing called time? Might there be realms of reality where there is no time? And yet there's still something there that we would call in existence. So these are the big, tough questions that we've yet to fully been able to grapple with. Yeah, well, I, I saw Richard Dawkins recently being interviewed by Pierce Morgan, and Pierce was struggling with the idea that there was no time before the Big Bang. And that obviously violates our embodied intuitions, right, which are strongly tilted in the direction of presuming time as a constant. And But, but I would even say the framing of that question is an interesting one, because to talk about before the Big Bang is to assume that the notion of before is applicable in that extraordinarily different realm of existence. In everyday life, of course, the word before makes sense. But when you get right back to the Big Bang, it could be that this conception of time emerges with that event and the very concept of before may be meaningless. It's like, you know, Stephen Hawking had a great analogy here, which was if you're walking on planet Earth and you pass somebody, you tell, you ask them which way is north. They point you northward. You keep on walking. You ask somebody else, how do I go further north? They point you further north as well. When you get to the North Pole and you say to somebody there, how do I go further north than the North Pole? They look at you quizzically because it doesn't make any sense. You've reached the location on Earth where North begins. The Big Bang could, in principle, be the location in reality where time begins, and going further back in time maybe as nonsensical as going further north than the North Pole. 